Oh, hi there. It's, oh gosh, it's been a couple of days, hasn't it? I've been trying to chat to you, but um, it's been very busy. <laughs> Clearing up after Christmas, of course, and um, going out and doing things. And um, I did try last night, actually, but I had been out, been out to the local uh, WI. It was the first meeting of, the, of um, the season after Christmas, so that was rather fun. I nearly didn't go, but then I thought, well, I would go, so I had to get supper very quickly, so that was a bit of a rush. And then I didn't mind, because I was... Um, dashing off, but um, I had to leave his half cooked. Well, the vegetables and potatoes were done, but um, his belly pork slices, which were rather thick and rather chunky, took much longer, so he had to finish off cooking them. But that was fine, because he's a very good cook, so that was good. And um, I, well, I had to dash off so quickly, I didn't get to eat all of my supper until I came home. So I'd had soup with some homemade croutons. And then, um, then what did I have? Oh, I had a salad you know, rocket and avocado and um, that borsin and um, I added some peas when I came home, so it was rather good. So I didn't have that till about half past nine. And a cup of tea, because I um, somehow managed to go the whole evening without having any tea to drink or coffee. Uh, so, and then of course I got onto my blogging, because I had a couple to finish off. And then I thought, well, I'll just quickly chat to you, but it was of course, it must have been about half past eleven, so I decided that was far too late and went to bed. So those were my last two days, and I, yes, yeah, so the last two days, very busy. Um, but anyway, enough of this. Uh, what I really wanted to say today was about, well, rather a sad note to talk about um, the death of, of the author, Elizabeth Jane Howard, you know, of the um, the Cazalet Chronicle fame, and, um, oh, lots of other books. I'm afraid to say I hadn't realised how many other books she'd written. So I must, um, you know, get to get one or two of them and, and read them. I mean, I love the Cazalet novels. They're absolutely brilliant. It's like, um, it's like Upstairs, Downstairs, Owen Downton Abbey. You know, great stories about families. <laughs> great families, too. Very interesting, fascinating. Uh, the Cazalet novels are four of the tetralogy novels uh, that you've already written. I read all of them last summer. Um, a friend had them all, and I borrowed them, and I just lapped them up. I couldn't get enough of them. And then, of course, it, one was terribly sad at the end of it because you thought, well, that was no more. There was no more books. And then I suddenly heard that she was bringing out another one last September, and that, that subsequently came out. And I got it for a Christmas present, um, all changed, so that's brilliant. So I haven't actually really got into it yet. I've only sort of briefly looked at it as it's so soon after Christmas and clearing up and everything else. Uh, so I haven't actually started reading it yet, I've looked. Uh, so I've got that to read. So that's great. Um, of course, that, uh, a biography of hers would be a wonderful thing for my book club, you know, later on in the year perhaps, so I might look into that. And um, um, for my, my next book club project, I'm doing the Tredescans, um, father and son. It was grandson, John, but I think he died fairly young. Uh, great plantsmen and gardeners to royalty and um, very interesting so I've got one book it's a bit of a textbook but that's very good and then I've got another book about them uh, which is more of um well I suppose it's still a textbook but it's much more of a novel type textbook so I'm looking forward to reading that so anyway I don't have to do my presentation until about perhaps late February so hopefully I've got plenty of time to do it um, so that, that's very good. So yes, I've got that too. But yes, so Elizabeth H Jane Howard, she died yesterday uh, at home in Bungay, Suffolk, at the age of 90. So she had a brilliant life. And of course, I think she was, um, she was married to Kingsley Amis at one stage. And um, Peter Scott, who was a pilot at the time, who became the, the naturalist. So very interesting life. And um, as actually she was born in the same year as my, um, as my mother was, uh, 1923, so yes, all very interesting stuff I just didn't realise. You know, you, you, you know the names of authors and, oh, I don't know, artists and, and writers and goodness knows what else, all sorts of very clever people, but you don't always actually get to know the person behind their creative work, which is a shame. Well, and then, then they die, of course, and then there's a sudden rush on their books and people are talking about them, which is all very interesting, but it, <laughs> it's a bit of a shame in a way. I mean, I'm sure aficionados of her work were well aware of 
her life and her style. Uh, it also reminds me of um, Patrick Lee Fermor, whose books I absolutely adore, his travel books. I've got most of his books. Um, I really do like his books very much. And then, uh, yes, I learnt more about him <laughs> after his death, but I did know quite a bit before, so that was good. So, yes, fascinating, but uh, terribly sad that she's died. Um, but she had a very good innings, 90, no, not bad at all. Um, and then, yes, oh, then my, yes, the next, very next book we've got to get a handle on is um, Mrs. Gaskell's Ruth, uh, a, the story of an unfortunate woman in, um, I think it's, I'm looking at my notes now, 19th century England. She um, she becomes pregnant and the man abandons her. Although he actually he does apparently later on offer uh, to marry her, but she she don't, turns him down. That's all I know about it at the moment. So I've really got to get a move on with that because we're discussing that at the beginning of January, well the second week in January. So I must get a move on with that. Um, I don't know much about her work uh, at all. I, I've only read and seen on television her North and South and the BBC's presentation of it, which was very good. I liked it very much. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I have actually started reading that and that seems there seems to be some very good descriptive passages, so I think that's going to be good. Gosh, I've just seen how long I'm rabbiting. I'm talking too much. So anyway, I've got that to do. Um, I've been blogging lots today. I, I'm telling people about my um, favourite anti-cold and flu soothing drink, you know, the honey and lemon, but with um, garlic and ginger added to Oh, it's not my recipe, of course, it's been around for some time, but it works, it's brilliant. And then I've been chatting about food as usual, and um, yes, I think we knew quite a lot of stuff. Oh, and then the WI meeting, which was great. We had a very interesting chat by um, a lady who um, had knew a great deal about the Whitney wool blanket making business in Whitney. Uh, which has been going on for a long, long time. It's all finished now, closed down, um, and they have a sort of a museum, but they don't seem to have as much information locally available as, as I would have thought. I expect there's all sorts of reasons for that. Apparently they still make blankets in Yorkshire, but it's a pity they don't make them in, um, in, in Whitney anymore. And they made woolen cloth as well. And they export it all over the world. And actually, I had one of their Whitney cellular blankets as a wedding present, um, a blue one with um, satin bound edges, so it must have been rather a special one. Um, they didn't bind them all with satin ribbon, it looked rather nice. Yes, it, it did last a long time, it probably could have lasted longer, but well, it didn't. Uh, so, so that was rather interesting. She, she was a very interesting uh, speaker. She knew her subject back to front, very good. So that's that, I think that's about all. Right, well, good heavens, look, I've talked for ages. I'm going to go. I'll talk to you again sometime soon. I hope you have a good, lovely weekend. Okay, bye for now. Bye.